What is going on guys and welcome back to some more Soccer Angels. In the last episode, we got the Sayaka ending and uh, that was uh, pretty nice. Um, we're all friends with Yuzuki. So now let's take a few steps back to episode 7 where we were in the cafeteria trying to find out where we were going to eat. And if I'm not mistaken, we are given the choice between sitting with Sayaka at the table or heading to the roof. Well, considering that we already uh, sat at the table with Sayaka, it's a pretty good bet that uh, Hikari is on the roof. So let's head for the roof. The roof is... It's just too noisy here, and I get the feeling sitting with Sayaka will only make things worse. I sneak past her and head for the stairwell. Though it wasn't exactly difficult with how into her food she was. The higher I scale the stairs, the more quiet my surroundings become, until eventually the bustling racket of the students softens to a dull mumble below. Ah, peace at least. At last, I mean. Okay, so we're heading up to the rooftop. Everyone scream your hearts out. Fuck! I emerge out onto the rooftop. A gentle breeze graces my face as the sun shines high in a near cloudless sky. It's perfect out here. Only, it seems I wasn't the only one that had decided to come up here. Ah, just as I basically predicted, and as it was barely obvious, I didn't even need to predict it, it's Hikari. Hikari stands on the edge of the rooftop, facing outwards as she peers down at the countless people. Given how intently she seems to be uh, analyzing them, I can only guess that she's keeping guard. I have to admire her dedication towards the whole thing. Actually, I do feel particularly safe knowing she's this serious about it. She's so absorbed in what she's doing, I don't think she's even noticed me yet. Making no real effort to conceal myself, I close up right behind her. Still nothing. She's miles away. I reach out and give a gentle tap onto her shoulder. Yo! <coughs> Alright, that was cute. <laughs> uh, she jumps a good several feet in the air at my touch and lets out an ear-piercing scream. Hey... Bit of an overreaction, maybe? Or am I just that scary? I don't know about you, but uh, I'm pretty ugly. <laughs> Fuck! I hand to her chest as if to keep her heart from breaking free. She spins around to face me. Her stern expression softens a little as she realizes it's me. But only a little. She still seems pretty mad. <laughs> Yeesh, yeah. I scrub at the back of my head with a grin. I did, I really did spook her. My bad. But you seemed miles away. Keeping guard? Huh? Her eyes flicker back to where she was watching for a moment. True, true. Thanks. I appreciate it. Oh, come on. There's no need to hide the soon. Not, no need to hide it behind a bunch of soon. You love me. Admit it. I mean, at least I think she does. <laughs> I would hope she does. Her face goes an interesting shade of pink. It doesn't take much to fluster her, does it? No, not really. Right, right. I get it. Sayaka well, yeah, that is, that is true. I mean, you know, I mean, like, just just the thought that you could be walking down the street and this like goat-like demon can just pop out and like go boo or some shit like that. It's actually kind of terrifying if you think about it. Uh, you know, plot. <laughs> uh, she sighs dramatically and turns to resume watch over the school. I open my mouth to maybe say something to her, but a low rumbling sound cuts me short. Hikari? Uh, she, her tummy's right. <laughs> she hungry. Girl hungry. <laughs> she answers without turning around, her ears clearly burning. Yeah, her face too. Um, it was a difficulty to discern what the sound was, given that I saw no sign of any lunch out here at all. 
Have you, uh, not had, a, not had any lunch yet? No way, sir. Silence. I think I hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, I, I, sometimes they can't help it, but I mean, come on now. Really? I don't, I don't know. I I used to I used to eat a lot at those lunch tables, and they just were not the cleanest. Then again, they were just not the cleanest. <laughs> Are you really going to be able to fight on an empty stomach? Her stomach growls again, arguing against her words. Uh. What? Well, I mean, if you're hungry, I got a little something you can eat. This here sandwich that I picked up. No, I mean, seriously. He picked up a sandwich before I came up here. It's been a while, but I can at least remember that. Can't remember his name sometimes, but I can remember he grabbed a sandwich. Yeesh. I know that place can get pretty packed sometimes, but she's making it out to be something far worse. She really can't deal with crowds, I guess. I had wrapped the sandwich I... Yes, yeah, I had wrapped the sandwich I had almost forgotten about and take a bite out of it, not wanting to forget about lunch completely myself. Hikari watches me intently as I take several more bites. Her eyes flickering to the sandwich every now and then. What type of sandwich is it, actually? Was it like a uh, lunch meat, maybe? I don't know. Um, I could practically see the hunger in her eyes. She's got them hungry eyes. Don't know the song, but that works for now. Okay. Uh, I stop mid-bite and offer the sandwich her way, since I'm beginning to feel terrible for eating in front of her. And I think, if I don't, she might just snatch it out of my hands at any moment anyway. Do you, um... Want some? You can split it if you want. Her mouth hangs open and her brow furrows in concentration. As if to consider uh, tofu. Waha! <laughs> Yahoo! Let's go! Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Her mouth hangs open and her brow furrows in concentration, as if to seriously consider it. I swear, she's almost drooling at this point. Jeez, come on now. Uh, she, co uh, she comes to her decision with an abrupt hmph and turns her head to the side, her hair whipping along with it. She whips her hair back and forth, guys. Get used to it. Uh, <laughs> I should have expected that. <laughs> that's, that's the best sound I can do. <laughs> I could try a little better. No. I can't do it. <laughs> At this point, I'm just getting closer to the mic, making really stupid noises. Her stomach beckons for the food. It's like, feed me! Feed me! Feed me! <laughs> oh my god, I'm an idiot. She grabs the sandwich and just... Uh, I break it off half before she snatches it away with uh, reluctance. Aww, so soon. So soon. <laughs> I don't think she's used to saying something like that. We're finally making progress. Yes. I can't help but smile. Okay, Kodagawa Yui, you can stop with the indecency talk. That's not, it's not what it sounds like, it honestly, but you know what I mean. Uh, she says with a snarl before she violently rips a chunk of the sandwich away with her teeth. Is it that good? She stops herself, her eyes widening some. I think she almost let slip something there. Wait, I think she almost let slip something there. I think she almost let something slip there. Uh, I really wish they weren't so secretive all about all this stuff. The Academy, huh? But I'm pretty sure I heard. 
Yikes. Despite her small frame, whenever she uses that commanding voice of hers, I feel about the size of a mouse before her. Or if you're Yukirito. Actually, yeah, he was a mouse, wasn't he? Never mind. Or maybe, no, he was a mouse. No. <laughs> Lucky bastard. Uh, I guess it's no use in pushing her for more information, unless I won't end up like that monster from before. Okay, okay. I didn't hear anything. It must have been the wind or something. I believe it said Mary. You know, the wind cries Mary. She sighs and gives her hair a toss, the anger leaving her suddenly as it had built. Could have fooled me. Yeah, because that... Yeah, because that, that, that's helped out before. Her expression darkens, yet her mouth still works. The majority of her the majority of her half of the sandwich already gone. I'm not even sure if she realizes she's eating it at the moment. She spends a good moment or two debating something in her head before she finally looks at me with serious eyes. Kenta, what, a magical girl? I don't know. I'd be the next Sailor Moon. Except really ugly <laughs> and a dude. Um, a group of chatty students emerge on, out onto the roof from the stairs, lunches in hand. Ikari clamps up at the side of them and turns back to her guard post. Shit. <laughs> if you uh, if you say so. But it sure looked important, since I don't think I've ever seen her give me that serious look before. Just by luck out of all these time, people will come to choose up to eat up here. It would have it would have to be now. Any semblance of conversation we may have had before is well and truly dashed now. She seems a lot more reserved in the presence of other people. Plus, I guess what we were discussing wasn't exactly appropriate for their ears. Sandwich. No problem. Huh? I didn't catch that. Ah, oh, come on now, don't be like that. Anyway, the lunch break soon comes to an end and we whisk back to class. And I will see you guys in a brief moment. Alright guys, and welcome back. So, now we're at the point where uh, Yuzuki dropped by some special friends of hers to attack us. Uh, this was, I think, the second time that she ambushed us. You know, when we had, when uh, Hikari had a little tentacle fun. Anyway, um... Now we're about to make our decision. We can't save them both. So who needs help more urgently? Well, last time we saved Sayaka from those... Well, she said dogs, but they were more like goat things. So I think this time, although the CG was... Very nice. We're going to be saving Hikari this time. I think it's clear that Hikari is the one in danger here. Those tentacles are pretty much squeezing the life out of her. I'm sure Sayaka has been in tougher situations before, so I feel confident in letting her handle those monsters. Hikari, hang on! I break into a sprint and head for the writing or the the writhing I can English. The writhing mass of tentacles that have laid their assault on an unfortunate Hikari. Oh so unfortunate. Uh I believe we have I think this is the point where we have the sword still, so. We still get the CG, so, you know, whatever. It's it's still good. Um, she continues to kick and uh, wiggle around in its hold. But if anything, I think she's only making the whole situation worse on herself. I come to her screeching halt as if I reach the monster, sword in hand. The tentacles seem like they want nothing to do with me, only focused on continuing their attack on Hikari. <laughs> Funny that. Okay, this should be easy. It's just like cutting away some weeds, right? Wriggling, slimy weeds. But weeds, no less. I feel myself- I steal myself as I pull back the sword. I can't hesitate any longer, or it might be too late. One clean swing is all I need to end this. So, here I go. Yeah! The sword sl Ooh, wow. The sword slices through the tentacles like butter. Severing them in two and relinquishing their hold on Hikari. She lands with a sticky and slimy splash, looking somewhat dazed from the whole experience. Huh. I did it! 
I actually did something useful. The monster's body slinks into the shadows with a low groan. I guess it can't really do much when the majority of its tentacles are now writhing around on the ground. Ugh. What's up? Are you okay? Uh, here. Let me help you up. I hold my free hand out to help her with an exhausted smile. She takes a good moment to debate things in her mind, even attempting to push herself up off the ground several times, only to slip right back down into the puddle of... whatever the heck that monster oozed. We all know what it is. Well... Most of us probably do. I do, at least. I know what it is. Uh, I get the feeling she isn't used to accepting help from people. She finally grabs a hold of my hand, and I hoist her up. Ugh. Her hand is coated with that foul slime. But the stuff washes off. Once back on her feet, she takes a good moment to recompose herself. She tries to keep an air of dignity about herself, despite being drenched head to toe in that stuff. She surveys the scene, her eyes moving from the uh, wiggling uh, tentacles cast aside on the ground before finally settling on her sword, still held firmly within my grasp. Her mouth opened in shock, having finally pieced together what happened. Yeah, we have sword. Light as feather. We did not die from holding it. We learn later. So She's completely taken aback. Is it really that unbelievable that I did something useful for once? Okay, maybe it is. Uh, yeah. I hope you don't mind that I had to borrow this. Can't help but feel embarrassed about it all. I was practically like... a hero. It's a bizarre feeling. I hold up the sword towards her, still as lightweight as ever. This thing is amazing. I feel like I was swinging a feather back then. She takes it after a few attempts of grabbing it at the air, her eyes still focusedly intent on me. She truly is shocked here. <laughs> Saki cries of distress cuts things short. Whoops. I got so caught up with saving Hikari, I'd forgotten about Sayaka completely. She's still dancing about, just barely keeping up with the rabid monsters. Hikari sighs and gives her sword a flourish. <sighs> she dashes towards her partner with a burst of speed and makes short work of the off uh, offending creatures, killing them all with one precise slash. They erupt into smoke, which is whisked away by the night air. <laughs> uh, finally able to catch her breath, Sayaka gives me a puzzled look as I wander over to them. Hey now. She's in as much a state of disbelief as Akari was. Come on now. Not the time for it's, uh, not the time to be talking this about words. English, yes. I get the feeling I'm missing something really important here. What's so special about me using her sword? I mean, I just picked it up and swung it. No big deal, right? Gary suddenly lights up and strikes a pose. Blade of the ready. She stopped her foot in frustration. The slime that no doubt oozed between her toes given off a squelch. Oh, that's pretty gross. Probably not. Sega sighs dramatically and throws her hands up in the air. She's right. I can't imagine how much worse things could have been if that girl had stood been around. Kenta, anata wa daijoubu? Me? Let's see. I'm drenched in sweat, my heart is still flipping like crazy from the adrenaline rush. I think I might throw up, and my head feels like it might split open at any moment. I'm... okay, actually. 
Oddly enough, I do feel fine. Better than fine, in fact. I'm happy I could finally do something, even if it wasn't much. So I'm not as much of a burden to these two. Hikari peers into the darkness, still holding her sword firmly. She seems reluctant about giving up on the fight so soon. Saika slaps a hand down on Hikari's tense shoulder, and she loosens up. Just a little. Most likely. Fa uh, Hikari finally gives up, her sword fading with a dim light. She, rel she reluctantly joins the pair of us, and we begin our journey home once more. And with that, the, can the chaotic night finally comes to an end. I get to live for yet another day. After tonight, I'm more grateful than ever for the existence of my guardian angels. However bizarre they might be at times. We part ways once we reach my house. Though, I know there'd just be a shot away if I need them, since they'll no doubt be camped in my garden again. I really don't understand how they don't get caught. So, I'm gonna end the episode here, guys. Um, So, yeah, we're, we're going on the Hikari route now. We got two parts of it done. And we're going to keep going until, you know, we get there. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed, make sure to slap that Mexicas like button right on the booty. And hope to see you beautiful bastards again in the next video. So stay awesome and be proud of who you are. Doo-doo-doo!